What an honor and a privilege it is to be in God's house on a Super Bowl Sunday night. I'd rather be here than there, I'll be honest with you. Because them people didn't do nothing for me. And he did everything for me. I tell you, if you've got your Bibles tonight, take and look with me in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Folks, we don't realize just how good God's been to us and how long-suffering God has been toward us. He truly has been better to us than we ever deserved. We didn't deserve His salvation, and He gave it to us. And then on top of that, He pours on blessings every once in a while. Praise God. If you got your place in Philippians chapter 2, would you stand to the reverence of the reading of God's Word? We're going to begin in verse number 1. If you're there tonight, shout a big amen. amen. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon the form of the servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found fashion in fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death of the cross. I'm going to give you my title and I'm going to explain it to you in a little while. But God gave me this sometime this week and I want you to think on this thought what's in your cup. What is in your cup? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you tonight, Father God, we thank you for the reading of your word. God, we thank you for the people who decided to be steadfast in their faith tonight and to come to the house of God on a Sunday night. When the rest of the world is glued to the television, God, may we turn into you tonight. Uh, God, as we come before your throne of grace, uh, God, to glorify your Son. God, to lift your Son up. God, that He be lifted up and that you draw all men uh, unto you. Father, we pray right now, God, that you'll hide me behind the cross. Anoint me in the fair precious blood of the Lamb. Father, we'll love you, God, and we'll thank you and we'll praise you for all that you've done. Father, and all that you're going to do in your sweet and in your precious name, we do so humbly pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I want you to look with me as I begin to explain a couple things to you. But I, I, as I begin to think on this thought, and as I begin to think, and, and as God began to lay that thought on my heart, I begin to do a little bit of study. And if you look at verse number 7 in Philippians chapter 2, you'll find the words that read like this. But he made himself of no reputation. Now I begin to do a little bit of study into that and actually what it actually meant. Uh, and as I begin to do a little bit of digging, uh, if you take that phrase and translate it uh, from the Greek and get the definition, it literally means that he emptied himself. He emptied himself. Now you say, preacher, what do you mean? Well, if we go back into the Gospels and we find uh, the Bible says, and it is said unto them, thus it is written, uh, and thus that Christ must go to the cross. And we find this, we find that Christ uh, had such a great desire to go to the cross. But as we look in the Garden of Gethsemane, we find that he prays, he begins to pray. And he says, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me 
You say, preacher, why, why do you want to focus on the cup? I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I want to show you a few things about the cup tonight that Jesus had. Number one, the behoovement that he felt. Uh, this is that desire and that drive and that duty uh, that he knew he had to go to the cross. Uh, the, and he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved uh, Christ to suffer uh, and to rise from the dead the third day. Listen tonight, that was his duty. That was his servitude. Uh, but I, I'm going to be honest with you, he didn't have to do it. Listen, we, we, we say all the time, God don't need me, but I'm sure glad tonight uh, that He wanted me. <laughs> he don't need me, not one I owed in this world. He don't, need to, he don't need me to preach you this message. Uh, he don't need me to read you God's Word. Uh, but thank God tonight, uh, He wanted me. I praise God tonight, but as I begin to think about uh, what was in Christ's cup and what was in uh, this cup that he had to drink from, uh, I begin to think about this desire and this duty he had uh, that he knew that without, uh, without him we would perish. And that was in his cup. That duty was in his cup. That servitude was in his cup. But as we move and as we... Get a little closer, we find this. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 38, the Bible says, Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. If you look with me in Habakkuk chapter 1, if you want to turn there, it's kind of one of those that are kind of hard to find. But Habakkuk chapter 1, beginning in verse number 1, the Bible says, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry? And wilt thou not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are that rise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. And I want you to notice that just how great a burden Habakkuk had for the violence and the discord and the disobedience that was happening in his time. And now we see that burden that has now been laid on Jesus Christ. And that burden is in that cup. We find here, he says, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. The burden... That he bore. Great was the burden that he bore tonight, folks. Great was the pain that he suffered. And I'll tell you this. Anything you're going through, he carried it and paid for it and took care of it on the cross. Amen. 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 Say, so, preacher, how can he do that being him 2,000 years ago? Let me tell you something. He might have been uh, on the other side of the world 2,000 years ago hanging on a hill called Calvary. But he looked right into your life and saw who you were uh, and saw where you were and said, I'm doing this for you. He bore your burdens. He paid your price. But as we begin to move on down, we find that his concern was great. Habakkuk's concern was great, and his sorrow was great. Listen, it was not because he was scared he wasn't going to get back up. Do you get what I'm saying? It wasn't that he was scared he wouldn't be able to pay for it. He was sorrowful for the things that were to come, the things that he would have to endure, the things that he would have to carry. How great that burden must have been. You imagine... David, that's a pretty big burden you're carrying right now, and that's okay. She's got it. But imagine him carrying all the burdens you've got. 
and all the burdens of the world at the same time. And how sorrowful it made him. How heavy it must have been. And I'm not saying anything bad about it. I, I pray for it. I, 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 I sympathize with you. I don't know what you're going through, but God knows. And God can. But I'll tell you this. We don't have any idea of the sorrow that Christ went through. We don't have any idea of the mind games that the devil played in his life. You say that the, the devil tempted Christ. Well, of course he tempted Christ. We know he did in the desert. I, and I believe that that temptation didn't just stop there. That there were times that the devil would come and place doubt in his mind and try and do all these things. How many times in your life has the devil come up and David and said it ain't worth going to church tonight. It ain't worth going to church today. You're just too tired. Don't worry about it. But you got up because you were steadfast uh, in the word of the Lord. Uh, and you made a decision. You said, I am going to the house of God to get what God has in store for me. You know, as we think about this cup and what Christ was doing here, we find in Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says that he made himself of no reputation. <clears throat> we find him in the Garden of Gethsemane where He's praying for this cup. Look with me here in verse, in chapter 26, verse 39 of Matthew chapter uh, 26, verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. You know, David, and this is what I'm beginning to think about. Everything that was in that cup, the burden that he bore, the desire and the drive that he had to go, the duty that was in that cup, the responsibility of that cup. He wouldn't have been in that cup had he not emptied it first. You say, Preacher, what are you saying? I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'll tell you this. So many times we bring in too much stuff into the house of God. And there ain't nowhere for Him to fill us up because we're filled up on the cares of the world. We're filled up with the burdens that we're carrying out there. When He said, cast on all your cares upon me, for I care for you. My burden is easy, my yoke is light. But I want you to, I want you to notice thirdly tonight the bitterness that he tasted. Verse 23, chapter 23 of Luke, verse 25 says, And he released unto them that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But Jesus, but delivered Jesus to their will. Jesus was delivered into the will of the people so he could fulfill the will of the Father. Amen. Let me tell you this. The willingness that he had. Yet let, let, let me let me let me I want you to I want you to understand this now. <clears throat> As we look back in Philippians chapter two, and I, I know we're doing a lot of flipping back and forth, and that's okay, you can catch up. But I want you to understand in verse number five what the Bible is saying here. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. I'll tell you tonight, that takes some great humility. Because you know that in, in, God, in Jesus, when He was wrapped in flesh, we know this, that He was 100% God and 100% man. And every once in a while when He would perform a miracle, a little bit of God uh, would break through the skin of that. <laughs> I'm telling you tonight, a little bit of God uh, would break through and you'd see a light coming from somewhere you ain't never seen before. Uh, but I'm telling you, it took all that He could uh, to humble Himself and say, God, uh, I'm distinguishing Your will above mine. 
You imagine how much power Jesus had and still set aside all that divinity and said, not my will, but your will. The Bible says that pride cometh before a haunty spirit and a haunty spirit before the fall. The Bible also says that God resisteth the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Boy, ain't you glad? I love that word, grace. That word resist in its definition literally means to push away. But it gives grace to the humble. Wow. As we begin to look tonight and as we've uh, almost covered everything that was in his cup. All that was in his cup. Everything, the, the bitterness of that cup, the burden of that cup, the duty of that cup, the responsibility of that cup, the weight of that cup was all for this. Lastly tonight would be the blessing that we reap. Look with me back in Habakkuk if you can. Chapter number 3. In verse number 17. <laughs> Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. The fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet will I rejoice. <laughs> In the joy, in the God of my will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I'm glad tonight. If He never blesses me again, I can still praise Him. If He never does another thing for me, praise God, He did enough on the cross. You say, preacher, what do you mean tonight? Listen, His cup was bitter so ours could be sweet. And His cup was heavy so ours could be light. And His cup was sinful so ours could be blameless I tell you tonight as, as I begin to think and I pray a lot David I pray that the Lord would empty me of myself to fill me up with his spirit Amen. but the truth of the matter is how many times do I really empty myself and make room for the Lord to move in you say, preacher, are you saying that God doesn't live in your side of your heart? I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is that He's got new mercies and fresh grace every time we step into this place. Praise God. We ain't got to carry around something that we've had for years. Praise God. He'll give us something new. <laughs> but you've got to empty yourself. Sometimes, David, sometimes we'll come in and have the world on our shoulders. And he says, just give that to me. I've got something I want to fill you up with. <laughs> just, just give me your burdens for a while. I've got something I want to get that maybe it'll refresh you. Praise God. But sometimes we come in and our cup's full. And we sit on a church house pew just like we talked about this morning. Sometimes our soul isn't ready to receive the seed. Sometimes when the sower... When the preacher, when the pastor gets up and begins to throw out the seed, our field is full of stones or full of thorns that are choking, up, choking out every seed that's been, been sown. Every time God goes to pour into our life, there's stuff in the way. And he says, I can't do anything with you because you've got stuff in the way. There are things in your life that you need to get cleared up before I can do something new in your life. You say, preacher, God wants to do something new in my life. Praise God, He does something new in your life every day. You say, what do you mean? You breathe fresh and new air every day. <laughs> and praise God, you get up to a new day. <laughs> a day that's never been seen before. Yes, God does something new in your life every day. And He has new mercies and new miracles for your life. But we've got to empty our cup. Praise God, his cup was bitter. So ours could be sweet. 
His cup was full of the cares and the sinfulness of this world so we could reap the benefits of heaven. So we could drink from the sweet apples that fall from under the tree uh, that he has. Praise God tonight uh, at the cup that he drank so we could drink from the cup that we have. But my God, if we don't empty that cup so he can fill it up, what good's it doing us? If we come into a church house full up, how's God going to fill us up? May we tonight empty ourselves that God might do something new. Praise God. I, I'll tell you what, folks. I'm just crazy enough to believe that God can do something new. And God can do something uh, 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 that's greater than what He did yesterday. As I begin to think about uh, this message and I begin to think about uh, what God had laid on my heart and my mind went to Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Praise God. He leadeth me through the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. <laughs> my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You say, what does God want to put in my cup? I believe tonight uh, He wants to put goodness uh, and He wants to put mercy in your cup uh, and fill it up fresh every time uh, that you come into His house. Uh, but we've got to get ourselves empty Amen. so God can do something new. I'll tell you tonight, What's in your cup? What did you bring him this tonight that you're full? Can God do something new in your life today? Can God move in a different way today than he did yesterday in your life? Can God give you something refreshing today? Listen, there are, there are things in this word that I've held on to for a long time. There are verses of Scripture that I've known for a long time, Miss Nancy. But every once in a while I run across something new. And it's like God just pours into me just a little bit. <laughs> and it's refreshing. It's something that stirs up that, that that's in that cup and it, it makes it alive again. It makes it fresh again. You ever, you ever had a, a cup of water kind of get lukewarm on you? Then you take some more cold water and pour in it. It kind of freshens it up a little bit, don't it? That's what God's mercies and goodness would do. God pouring into our cups. Sometimes that water would get too old and we just need to pour it out so God can do something new in our life. May we understand that when we come into God's house, if we're not emptied of ourselves, He can't do something new. May we understand it just how great our humility has to be to empty ourselves, truly. You have to understand how great Christ's humility was to empty himself so God could do something in his life. Listen, God's purpose for Christ's life was a great, it was a great weight and a great burden, but thank God he bore that burden for us. Amen. He carried that cross. He carried my cross. He carried Brother Jerry's cross. <laughs> he carried Brother Donald's cross. He carried your cross, David, up Calvary and laid up on that cross. Praise God, nobody killed him. He laid his life down. Amen. He laid his life down as a sacrifice <laughs> for my sins and for your sins. But I tell you this, I'm about like Habakkuk. If, if, if the olive tree never produces any more oil, if I never find any more cattle in the field, if, if I never go to the pantry and there's never any more peanut butter, praise God, <laughs> I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. <laughs> He's been too good to me for me just to look at the little things and say, is there a God in heaven? I know tonight that there's a God in heaven. If there ever comes a time uh, when I should question that, somebody in this room slap me. Uh, but I'm telling you, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. May He fill my cup up that I might pour into somebody else something fresh. Fathers, we come to you tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Father, we thank you for uh, 
uh, God, your blessing. Father, we ask right now, God, that you uh, move in this place, God, as they come to get a song of invitation tonight. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will uh, use me, God, forever to your will. Father, I pray right now, God, that you'll help me, God, to empty myself, God, so you can fill me up. God, I pray right now, Father, that you'll use my life as an example to exemplify you. Everywhere I go, may they see you in me. God, may I not be seen, may I not be heard, but may you be lifted up. Father, I love you. God, and I thank you and I praise you. God, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Your name I do pray. Amen. As they